This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 3-1 in the book on page 144, and the target is I can find square roots of perfect squares. Those are the easy ones to do. Well, before we go into square roots, though, we have to understand what squaring a number really means. And to understand squaring a number, you have to understand the second power. Second power is what we call squaring. So when we take, let's say, 1 and we square it, or we say 1 to the second power, that just means 1 times 1, which is 1. And same with 2 to the second power. That's 2 times 2. That's 4. To 3 to the second power. Well, that's 3 times 3. That's 9. So these are this is called squaring. When we actually say something is raised to the second power, we can say it's squared. For instance, I can say, hey, square 4, and we say 4 to the second power. That's 4 times 4. That's 16. Take a look at these numbers right here. These are special. We can keep continuing on with the pattern. We'll end up with 25 here. These numbers are called perfect squares. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36 would be 6 times 6, or 6 squared. 7 squared would be 49. 8 squared would be 64. 9 squared would be 81. And 10 squared would be 100. Those are called perfect squares, which means they make a perfect square uh, on each side. If I say, uh, let's say, 2 squared, you can say or show that you can make a perfect square with 2 on each side, 2 dots on each side there. How about 3 squared? Well, 1, 2, 3. So you have 3 on this side, 3 on that side. So we call those perfect square numbers. Again, here's some more perfect square numbers. Now you got to understand, squaring a number and finding the square root, which we're about to talk about, are inverse operations. Kind of like add and subtract are inverse operations. Both squaring something, raising something, let's call it x, and raising something to the second power, and then square rooting it, there's our symbol for square root, would be undoing that. Let's talk a little bit more about that here. It says a square root of a number is one of its two equal factors. So, and the symbol, the square root symbol, is actually called a radical sign and is used to indicate a positive square root. So when we actually take a perfect square number, let's take 64, we know that's eight times eight. When we square root that, we're asking for the positive square root, which would be eight. What number times itself equals 64? Well, eight does. What about uh, square root of 100? Well, what number times itself equals 100? 10 does. It says every positive number has both a negative and a positive square root. Now, when you actually square root a number, let's say square root 16, we know that's 4. 4 times 4 equals 16. But did you also know that negative 4 is also an answer? So the square root of 16 can also be negative 4. Take a look at this right here. You know that 4 times 4 equals 16. But remember, when we take a negative 4 and we take a negative 4 and we multiply them, they also equal 16. Now, when you see the square root symbol itself, it's asking for just the positive square root, unless they put a plus or minus in front of it. If they put a plus or minus in front of it, then they're looking for both of them. In that case, you could write the answer as plus or minus 4. To keep it simple, we're mostly going to be asking for positive square roots. So just the simple positive root of this perfect square number. Let's try a couple. It says find each square root. What's the square root of 64? We just did that one. What number times itself equals 64? Well, 8 does. There you go. Take a look at the second one. They're asking for the negative root. Well, what's the square root of 25 over 36? Here's something neat. You might notice that 25 and 36 are both a perfect square. So here's what we can do. We can actually take the square root of 25 and the square root of 36. That's 5 and that's 6. So the answer will be the fraction 5, 6. But they have a negative in front of it, so they want the negative root of that. How about number 3 here? Plus or minus the square root of 1.21. Another th thing they like to throw at you is they put a decimal in there. If I take that decimal out, 
here's what it really is. 121. Now, I happen to know that 121 is 11 times 11. So the square root of 121 is positive or negative 11. Now, what would it be if it was 1.1 1 .1 instead of 1 point, or 1 1.21 instead of 1, uh, 121? Well, let's see here. What was 1.1 1 .1 times 1.1? 1 .1? What does that equal? We have one there, we've got one there, put a zero, add our one here, put a one here. There we go, then we go like this. Notice we have two spots. Hey, check that out. It actually is going to be 1.1. 1 .1. So sometimes if you remove the decimal and you can see a perfect square number, then you can actually find the answer quicker. How about you try a couple of these on your own and then come back and see how you do. How about the square root of 9 over 16? Well, square root of 9 and the square root of 16 are perfect squares, so I'm going to do those. That'll be 3 and I believe this one's 4. So it would actually be the fraction 3 fourths. How about B? They're looking for the negative root of 49, square root of 49. Well, if we take square root of 49, that's going to be 7. Now we just put a negative on it. They're looking for the negative root. And C here, they're looking for the positive and negative root of 0.81. I'm hoping you see that 81 and you think to yourself, hey, I know that the square root of 81 is 9. So, what would be the square root of 0.81? Well, if you're guessing 0.9, you're going to be right, I believe. So let's take 0.9 times 0.9 and see if that works. 9 times 9 is 81. Now you move the decimal over two spots, 1, 2. And it's correct. So the square root of 0.81 is going to be 0.9, but they're looking for the positive and negative roots. So what we'll do is we'll put the positive and the negative on that one as well. And that would be the answer, plus or minus 0.9. All right. Well, by the definition of a square root, if you have a number, let's call it n, and you square it, and that equals a, then to find what n is, all you have to do is take the square root of it. So take a look at this problem here, number four. It says solve t squared equals 169. Check your solution. Well, if we have something that's squared, it equals 169. All we have to do is unsquare it. You square root this side, it undoes this two. So literally, it'll negate that. It's kind of like adding and then subtracting the same amount. It undoes that. So once you do that, you end up with t on this side. And if you do the square root to the left side, you better do it to the right side. So the square root of 169 on the right side, that actually equals 13. And there you are. t is equal to 13. Try a couple on your own down here. We've got... Let's see here, 289 is equal to a squared. Let's unsquare it by taking the square root of a squared and then take the square root of 289. And let's see here, a squared, unsquared. Well, those two things cancel each other out. You're left with a. Remember, those are inverse operations. The square root of 289, I believe, is 17. You can check that on your calculator if you like. How about this? m squared is equal to 0 0.09. Well, let's take the square root of this side and the square root of this side to undo the squaring. We're left with m, and that's equal to whatever the square root of 0 0.09 is. Hmm. I know that the square root of 9 is 3, so I'm going to take a guess that it's 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 equals 0 0.09. So that actually is correct. It's 0 0.3. Three tenths. How about this last one? You got y squared, and we want to get it to y. So we have to undo the squaring by square rooting. And once we unsquare it, we let, we're left with y. And then we square root 4 25ths. Both 4 and 25 are perfect squares. That's 2 and 5. So we'll end up with 2 fifths. There you go. And our last example, 
we're talking about the pyramids is the base of the Great Pyramid covers an area of about 562,500 square feet. Determine the length of each side of the base. The base is made up of a square. And when you find the area of a square, you always take the side times the side, and that gives you the area. Now take a look at that equation. Side times side equals 562,500. Well, let's undo that. Let's solve that equation. You can see they do the simple math for you here. They say take the square root of this side and that side, and you end up with S is equal to whatever the square root of 562,500 is. Now, in this type of question, I would definitely be using a calculator. They do show you how to do it by prime factorizing. But I say, hey, let's use our calculator since we have it, and we get 750. So each side is going to be 750. What they're saying is, hey, if it's a square, that's the base of the pyramid. This side's 750. This side's 750. They're all 750, but when you take 750 times 750, you get that 562,500 square feet. All right, how about you try it? It says a concert crew needs to set up a 900 set up 900 chairs on the floor level. If the chairs are placed in a square arrangement, how many should be in each row? So you're going to have a square which represents all these chairs and there's 900 chairs. Well, how many to make it perfectly square? How many are you going to have on one side and on the other side? so that it all matches up. Again, this is the side here and this is the side. To find, in this case, we have our perfect square where we actually multiply the two S's to find this area of 900 square cheers in this case. So we're going to undo this by square rooting both sides. Square root undoes the squaring, so we'll end up with S is equal to whatever the square root of 900 is, and I believe that's 30. 30 times 30, hmm, there we go. So we've got 0, and then we got 9, yep, equals 900. There it is. So each side will have 30 chairs on it. Don't hesitate to watch the video again if you need to. Check out the examples in the book. I just did them. Or you can always watch the personal tutor videos online. And as always, this has been a Friday Shoes production.